I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV here today, Velocities of Music, here today to do Scissor Sisters 2010 release Nightwork, the first album from the Scissor Sisters in three years. If you've never heard of the Scissor Sisters, let me tell you something. You're missing out because this is one of the most fun albums I've listened to in a long time. Uh, these guys are dance pop. That's what this is. You know, like late 70s disco, early 80s kind of new wave. Very dancey stuff. What are the bands that this sounds like right now that are out of Montreal? Hot Chip, Jamiroquai. I mean, they're, I don't know if they're even still around, but they've been around. Yeah. And Yaysayer, stuff yeah. like that. Uh, but Tom, like, who, who does this remind you of in the past? From the past, I'd put Bee Gees, oh, yeah. maybe a little bit of Talking Heads, their later stuff once they got, you know, a little more electronic. Uh, Roxy Music, uh, Duran Duran, David Bowie, Prince. Uh, even like. Well, this is more a little more contemporary, but uh, a lot of the vibes you get from the Beck album Midnight Vultures, mm -hmm. which is yeah. very dancey, funky, you know, still kind of pop. But but I mean that pretty much right there sums up the sound. Prince. Yeah. I don't know what you think Prince. Oh yeah, yeah. I know you're a big Prince fan. Too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I found this to be a really fun album. I know mm -hmm. I already said that, but but it's just it comes down to just this awesome production, this you know lighthearted attitude. The lyrics are all about sex and fun, and, and and these guys came out of the you know the New York night scene, and so night work kind of makes sense for that. But in, in the picture is this skinny butt with like tight like spandex on. It's really kind of gross to look yeah. at after a while, but like. But it fits it the works, music, yeah. it really does, and that says something about album artwork, which you can see right down below our little video here at our website. But, but you know, one thing that I really got is just, it was just so, and I use the word very particularly, insipid. It's insipid. It gets in, it just gets you. You just gotta dance to this. You yeah. just have to. And, and I love the bass parts, I love just, I love the beats, I love... I love the track lengths. That's another thing I wanted to say is that I think that a lot of dance music, maybe this is because it's more pop oriented than LCD Sound System or School of Seven Bells, which we've reviewed that we've critiqued uh, their tra track lengths, but I think that Scissor Sisters do a great job of, of keeping their songs concise and not letting them drag out to this to this length where you're kind of bored after a while, or it's an unjustified length, where I feel like these are very, very uh, polished and manicured to the point that they're just you know, perfect little pop gems. And really, I don't think there's a bad song on this album. I definitely think have a few favorites that I think are standouts, but I don't think any song yeah. on this album really holds it back. I, I completely agree. I think what really makes this album possible for me to love is is the attitude. The attitude is so specifically yeah. just, just fun-loving and not too serious. If they were taking what they did here serious, it would. if they were trying to be deep with it, it would ruin it, but you know they're just doing it for the sake of doing it, and, and it's fun. Now, at the same time, the way they do that is also one of the biggest limiting factors, because right. the style... Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this a pretty good score, but not a fantastic score, and here's why. I think as far as protocol releases go, they're doing this about the best you can do. Right. But... It still is what it is. It feels like a protocol release. They needed to release an album, so they've made some songs. And because they're very talented and can just make the best melodies, just perfect, unique, original melodies, um, you know, it all comes together to make a good album. But they're not really pushing the envelope. I feel like, uh, you know, a lot of the artists I named, um, you know, were doing things like Roxy music, you know, to, to really push it forward. Um, well, even these, something like Lady Gaga. Yeah, and and these these guys and gals, they they're doing a very good job, but they're just I don't feel like they're really trying to go above and beyond. Right. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun, and it, and it's basic at that. But I mean, that's that's what they set out to do, and so mm -hmm. contextually, they did a great job. If we were grading on context, this would probably be a very high score. But yeah. the fact is, we're comparing this to all the other really ambitious albums that are yes. out there, and we can't we can't discount it. Um, uh, oh, oh, my favorite tracks, Tom. I love track two, uh, Whole New Way, track four, Any Which Way, and track seven, Something Like This. I'm going to go uh, track two, Whole New Way, track seven, Something Like This, and the last track, Invisible Light. Pretty it's good. probably the longest track on this album, um, and, and it works because it's the last track. It's very justified in being long because it does some different things, and it sums everything up very well mm -hmm. that they that they've done before it. You know, and I told you before we started this episode, but I'm gonna comment now. Yeah, yeah, but you, you know, if this album were to have come out in like '82, '83, I feel like 
it would have been legendary. Like, it would have just changed music forever. Everybody yeah. would be all about the Scissor Sisters. But now it's just kind of yeah. this revival, kind of keeping this kind of really cool, fun style alive um, um, that, that makes, makes a good dance time, yeah. dance party. <laughs> Something good to put on at a party. Oh, for sure. Tom, I think I'm going to go 74 for the combined reasons that we've said. I mean, I feel pretty much in agreement with everything you said. I'm also going to say 74. 74 is so pretty we're, solid. We're agreeing again. And, and, and keep in mind, when we say it, when we say it, you know, we have a lot of good things to say about this, but we're only giving it a 74. That's good. That's a good yeah, it's score. It's a good score for us. You just got to keep in mind that contextually, this is a great album. It's just it didn't set out to do a whole lot, yeah. but it just it did well at what it accomplished. The 70s range for us means that there's still definitely a lot more good going on than bad. Absolutely. But here, just the couple of bad things are bad enough that, that we can't put it in the 80s and 90s range, which is yeah. like really forward thinking because right. this isn't this is more backwards right. thinking more retrospective yeah. um than it is uh you know really pushing anything but yeah. but and it's still good at there's it. even a level of unoriginality there too yeah. that you have to take in or at least i take into consideration uh -huh. and that bothers me but anyways yeah uh, that's scissor sisters night work now what do you think about the scissor sisters do you like their music do you think it's a little too retro or do, you, do, you, do you just dance when they put them when you when you hear them and do you like the whole sex orientation in the lyrics do you think that that's a little overboard does it bother you tell me and tell Tom tell us so we can get a conversation going because I'd love to talk about that that's pretty mm -hmm. socially involved let us know at www.velocitiesofmusic.com I'm Jake I'm Tom and we are VIMTV moving music critique forward